Shabbat Shalom. Like you, I've been spending a lot of time at home. In my house, I have hanging uh, on the wall a magazine cover from The New Yorker by Saul Steinberg called A View of the World from Ninth Avenue. It was the cover of The New Yorker on March 29th, 1976, almost exactly 44 years to this day. It depicts the perspective of a person who believes that New York City is the center of the world and everywhere else is very, very distant. Over the past two weeks, while I've been spending the majority of my time within my own walls of my home, the West, rest of the world doesn't actually feel so distant at all. As a community, we continue to adapt. We find new ways to connect, to feel close to one another. Judaism has adapted to major changes throughout history. And this Shabbat, we make a change as we begin, as we begin Vayikra, Leviticus, the third book of the Torah. The Torah portion focuses on the rules of sacrifice, a way to praise or to atone for our sins. While we continue to read about these sacrifices, this is no longer our practice. Judaism has adapted. In Judaism, we no longer offer sacrifices and we no longer have a temple in Jerusalem. Yet, I think we can relate to the Israelites wandering in the desert, trying to find structure and order in a moment of, of wandering when their whole world has changed from being slaves in Egypt to now being free. Rabbi Shai Held explains, the tabernacle, the Mishkan, is nothing if not a tightly structured, highly ordered space in a chaotic, terrifying world. One place, at least, is governed by order and structure. He further explains that the worship in the Mishkan, the very orderly and precise details that we read about in this week's Torah portion, well, this is intended to be in opposition to uh, the lived experience of the Israelites, creating the experience of structure and order in a time of disorder. As we try to find our own grounding at this time when the ground keeps moving, I think we're all trying to find structure and order in our own lives. People have shared with me how much the Jewish community or really how much our Temple Sinai community gives structure and order to their own lives. It's difficult when we're not able to, to gather together, to be present at Temple Sinai, our home. It reminds me of this rabbinic story that takes place in Jerusalem after the destruction of the temple. Once Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai was leaving Jerusalem with Rabbi Joshua, and when Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai saw the ruins of the temple, Rabbi Joshua said, Woe unto us that this place is destroyed, the place in which the sins of Israel were atoned. And Rabbi Yochanan said to him, Do not be so troubled. We have another atonement no less effective. And what is it? Acts a loving kindness, as is said by the prophet Hosea, for I desire loving kindness, not sacrifice. Chesed chafatzi below zevach. So what were the, exactly these acts of chesed, of loving kindness? Well, it was to celebrate the bride, to accompany the dead, to give tzedakah, and to do tefillah, to do prayer. So yes, a physical space is important, but I don't think that's what defines a community. Our community is not a physical building. Our community is the way that we act towards one another. And despite these challenges, this past week, we have celebrated simchas. We have also confront, comforted those who mourn. We have given our time to help others. and We've also prayed together. We are a community of chesed. The world of sacrifice, the word for sacrifice or offering is korban, korban in Hebrew. It comes from the same word of karo, to be close to one another. This essence behind the korbanot is the ability for us to feel close to one another and to God. So while Judaism has adapted from the days of korbanot, of sacrificial offerings, may we continue to do that work of loving kindness, of chesed. As we each act, as each act of chesed, we are able to feel closer and closer with one another. Shabbat shalom.